All right, so one of the biggest problems with learning to shoot a slingshot is getting around fork kits. Now you can shoot a slingshot your entire career and never have a fork kit if you'll follow these basic foundational principles. Now if you choose to ignore them, you're probably gonna have a fork kit. It just happens. It's okay. But it's very avoidable. All right, so we're gonna go through a couple of things. One of the uh, first causes is the way the slingshot's gripped. Now slingshots can be gripped in several different ways. Um, there can be a hammer grip like this, not a preferred grip for this particular slingshot. There's what we call a fork supported grip or a finger hook grip where your forefinger hooks around the prong and your thumb braces against it. That is by far the preferred way to shoot the slingshot. And then there's what we call the pinch grip or the choker grip. Now this is a very strong grip, but I'm gonna show you why this might not be the first grip you wanna try. All right, so if we hold the slingshot this way and we wanna get ourselves square and have good alignment with that hand, one thing we can see is that I'm having to lift my wrist up out of the neutral position. Now certainly um, you can get around that. There's not enough forces here for that to be, really be problematic. But here's where the problem comes in. If I start to draw back in my hands in this position, upon release, I'm having to hold my hand up like this. My body naturally wants to drop. So if I drop upon release, my hand is in the flight path. That can cause a hand hit, can also cause a fork hit. Now, if we'll look at it differently, if we do a finger hook or a, a fork supported grip, I can keep my wrist in a neutral position. And when I shoot, my hand's nowhere in, in the danger zone. So go with a, a fork supported grip over a pinch grip. Now, the biggest thing that causes fork kits is not paying attention to what's going on in the pouch. A couple of things can happen here. We've gone over this before. If you put your hand together like this and rest the projectile there, then close your hand, and the ball is behind this bone, you've created a speed bump. All you can do is lift your thumb. This projectile has to ride up and over the bone to begin its path downrange. As it flips up, it can actually flip the shot right into the tip of the fork. That's the fork hit. Here's the way to get around that. Open your hand up. Now, you've got two fingers can work together. If your hand's like this, then you can open them together and it slips out. And finally, pinch the projectile itself. Of course, it's easier to get a purchase on it if you pinch, uh, pinch in front of the projectile. You've got much more uh, surface area, but that again is gonna put you in a speed bump situation. So hand open, pinch the projectile itself, use a, a thumb supported grip, keep it square to the target, and it'll go straight down the line every time. So let's go over this one more time. Biggest thing, finger hook, thumb support. Yep. We see this a lot with folks. They wanna grip it like this. Yeah, it feels strong, but you're putting yourself not only in bad ergonomics, but potentially because of the way your body moves, you've put your hand into the danger zone. Another thing is a pronounced flip. Some people uh, enjoy shooting with a very pronounced flip where at the end of the cycle, they throw their hand over. This can cause a couple of problems. If you're shooting bands that are too light with, for too heavy of a projectile, that can actually cause the um, projectile to get captured in the pouch and we get what's called a return to sender. You do not want this. That makes the projectile come back at you. So if you are a flip style shooter, you would be best served to try to learn how to not be a flip style shooter. If you are a flip style shooter, please be conscientious of your band and ammo combinations. Another problem um, we see is folks thinking that stones can be shot out of a slingshot made to shoot spherical projectiles. Now certainly this slingshot could be set up to shoot stones just fine, but you wanna use a larger pouch. Your standard pouch for shooting spherical projectiles has been minimized to reduce drag. If the projectile or a stone is not as spherical as possible, you may not have it centered. So when you grab a hold of it, by the time you get to full draw, it may be well off. Now you've got a jagged or an uneven projectile traveling down the path with uneven band tension. That's a recipe for fork kits and also really bad shooting. So if you're gonna shoot stones, use a um, pouch that's set up for stones and uh, pay particular attention to your release. So if you have experienced a fork kit, one thing you wanna do is stop shooting for a moment and inspect your slingshot. 
Has there been any damage? If there is damage, is it enough to warrant stopping shooting? That's really only for you to find out. It's much like hitting the curb in your car. You may be able to drive on, but you may have done damage underneath. It's always better to err on the side of caution. So if you've had a fork kit and you think it's a bad one, give us a call, we'll walk you through it, or retire the slingshot. Most slingshots can shrug off fork kits, no problem. And if they do happen, don't worry too much. So if you do have a fork kit and you inspect it and you see that you've got a sharp spot or any abrasion there, make sure you take some time to clean that up. It's really just a cosmetic problem, but what you want to avoid is damaging the rubber. As the rubber comes traveling past that damaged area, you don't want to nick the rubber or reduce its band life. So take the time to clean up the, um, the nick, the damage, if there is any. Most of the time there is no damage. If you do have the problem, stop for a moment, then maybe have someone videotape you after you've thought about what might be going on. Watching yourself on video is a great way to learn about your technique and refine it. And finally, one of the best things you can do for your shooting is go shoot with people that are better than you. Watching people who are really good at shooting kind of has an osmotic effect and rubs off. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs>